Uh, now it gives me great honor to welcome uh, one of the entertainment industry's most versatile entertainers, star of uh, stage, uh, theater, film, and of course uh, the, the NBC drama ER. Please welcome to the program uh, the great Yvette Freeman. Yvette. Hey, hi. Uh, how are you? I am just great. Uh, can you hear me all right, Yvette? I can hear you, yes. Oh, it's uh, such a great honor to have you on the program, and I'd like to thank you for uh, appearing here. Thank you. I'm just glad. I mean, I thought you were a country radio, you know, show, and you're playing my jazz. Well, uh, primarily uh, I play old uh, style country music, but uh, mm -hmm. every so often I like to break the program format and bring some really great different stuff uh, to the listeners. Mm -hmm. And I, I sure love uh, the type of music you sing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And so I guess, uh, I know you're busy, so uh, I guess maybe let's start back at the beginning, if we could. Okay. What now, you <laughs> now, you were born in Wilmington, Delaware, correct? Yep. One, one of seven children. Mm hmm And now, wouldn't you say you developed your love of performing from your father? Yeah. My father uh, was a piano player. Um, his name is Charles Freeman. He passed away a few years back. Um, and he played in the uh, Philadelphia, Wilmington, sometimes down in Maryland area. Um, you know, he would work most regular job during the day and played his music at night. And the music was his heart. And then we would have these, uh, he would have jam sessions in our little house, and I just fell in love with music from there. And so who were your, uh, some of your other earliest musical influences, other than your uh, father, of course? Well, I mean, because there were so many different people coming through our home, um, different guitar players and singers. There was this woman named Millie Cannon. She's still in, in Wilmington. I could listen to her sing. I used to uh, hang out on, when I was a kid. We had a grand piano in our living room, and um, you could be sit underneath that and hear and, and watch everything, and nobody would pay you any attention as a kid. Um, but I also loved um, um, Ethel Waters. <laughs> and I, I loved, uh, of course, Di uh, Dinah Washington and sure. Sarah Vaughn and, you know, those, the early, you know, reference, Ella Fitzgerald, of course. And um, I would listen to them because my mom would play them on the high five. So how old were you when you decided that you wanted to pursue a career in the performing arts? Um, I was in the ninth grade. And I remember seeing um, um, a musical, and besides my father and all, um, but I saw a musical at my high school, and I said, I want to do that. And that's when I started performing on stage. And as far as singing jazz with my father and all that, he really didn't want me to do that. Um, and in fact, he didn't think I had a great voice at all. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. And it took me a while to prove to him, you know, that I was um, a singer. It took a long time, in fact. He wanted me to go to college. He didn't want me to come out and just, you know, you know, do the singing thing. And you did go to college. You earned a bachelor's degree from, uh, what was it, the University of Delaware? Yep, in art. And yep. from there you moved it to New York, correct? New York City? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought I could be this great artist. And that would, uh, uh, I could work as an artist during the day and I could sing at night. Well, I found out that both of those careers are like the same, you know, um, very hard to get into. Sure. And so you have to focus. I had to focus on one, and I decided that the, the singing and the acting was what I had to focus on. And I, you know, was very lucky. And I started singing as soon as I got there. So, so what was the uh, first musical that you took part in in New York? Um, it was an, uh, a, a black uh, African-American company. Um, that had been going on since the, the 60s. Um, we would uh, sing in schools and travel all over the, the country in maybe two cars. <laughs> it was called Voices Incorporated. And that's how I cut my teeth in show business in, uh, from New York. And then you went on to perform in the musical Ain't Misbehaving. Was that in New York, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got the first national of that. And um, the originals was Nell Carter, Amelia McQueen, um, Ken Page. And um, I played the um, a Nell Carter role for the national company. And we just toured all um, you know, the major cities in the United States. And then we went back into New York when um, the, the original Broadway cast came out to California. And that's how I, you know, 
And then I left that company and I went to do the Parisian company because I wanted to see Paris. And as far as anybody knew on Broadway, Nail Carter was still there singing. <laughs> they could, you know, they could look at the program and still think I was Nail Carter. I don't know. <laughs> so, and, and I went to uh, Paris. Yeah. And you, you also toured uh, around uh, other countries in Europe, too, didn't you? Yeah, then, then there was another, there was an international company. That was the Parisian company of St. Ince Behaven. Then there was an international company, and that was a whole other year of my life, too. Each one is a, a year. The national, the Broadway, the Parisian, the international. You know, I, I've got this thing of getting on shows that are long-lasting, <laughs> like <Yeah>. ER. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll talk about ER in a, yeah. <laughs> in a couple of minutes or so. But uh, mm -hmm. what were some of your other early stage credits? Um, let me see. Um, I did uh, uh, Nonsense in Boston for a couple of years. That was fun. Um, I did, uh, oh, God. Um, I got to look at my resume. A whole bunch of shows. Um, <laughs> Show Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope. Um, I did The Wiz, the last national tour of The Wiz. I mean, I did a bunch of shows, you know, because, you know, you got to eat and, um, Make ends meet. I'm not looking for my resume as we speak. <laughs> I'm on my computer. <laughs> so, so what year did you uh, move to L.A. or decide that you wanted to uh, pursue show business out in Los Angeles? Well, you know, the amazing thing is, it feels like it was yesterday, but I'm going to tell you the truth. It's 17 years ago. Wow. Yeah, because ER is now in its 15th year, and I got that two years after I arrived here. In L.A. And uh, before ER, you were guest starring on uh, pretty prominent shows of the time, too. Step by Step, L.A. Law. And, uh, yeah, but I was doing um, a, a nurse. Usually I'm a nurse in everything. <laughs> <laughs> so when ER came up, I was the perfect nurse for them. <laughs> so... They, they, what? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, well, they kind of put you in, in little boxes, you know, uh, in California, I mean, in, in Hollywood, you know, and if you look at the nurse type, you get lots and lots of nurse jobs, and I seem to look like a nurse. <laughs> well, you put, huh? you play the part well. Well, you know what, maybe, I mean, I feel very blessed because nurses are fabulous people, and they have a certain kind of a, a strength and a warmth to them to do what they have to do, and personally, I could never, ever, ever, ever be a nurse. I just look at these people and just... I'm in awe, you know, so, totally awe. So 1994 came along, and weren't you actually thinking of leaving show business? Oh, yeah. Well, see, as you said, I had these guest spots, and in L.A., um, in Hollywood, you can guess, do guest spots and still not make enough money, okay? <laughs> and um, yeah. so I had made a decent living, you know, traveling all over the place doing musicals. I was thinking about going back to uh, New York, and that's when ER came up. 